G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about boron and all of its many uses in lubricants. So if you see boron on your used oil analysis results, you can get an idea for where it came from. We'll talk about boron additives and we'll also talk about boron contaminants. But before we get started, a little bit of trivia. So if you'll remember that movie that came out in the 90s, The Fifth Element. I think, personally, I thought it was a really great movie, but spoilers ahead, the fifth element was love. Kind of seems like a really lame ending. And incorrect, because in fact, the fifth element was boron. It was boron all along. Um, boron, of course, in the periodic table sits next to carbon. So boron has the atomic number five, carbon is six. And a little bit like carbon, it can form many, many different compounds, which makes it attractive for use in lubricants. Most of the boron in the world um, comes uh, is mined, right? It's a, it's a water-soluble substance, so it tends to be found in crystalline form. And most of it is mined in Turkey. Obviously not that Turkey, but this Turkey. So let's talk about boron additives. First of all, we've got boron antioxidants. And in general, these are what we call borated esters. So again, if we went back to our video on ester synthesis, Acid plus alcohol makes an ester plus water. So generally it's a boric acid reacted with an alcohol will get you a borated ester. Now these are have found to be quite effective in, in lubricants and are starting to see a little bit more use in engine oils. The reason for that is because um, ZDDP, which we've al already talked about, is an antioxidant component, but its quantity of sulfur and phosphorus means that it can poison catalysts. And with emissions regulations being what they are, people are looking for alternatives. Borated esters kind of fit that bill. The other thing is that there are synergies between uh, the borated esters and ZDDPs. So they actually uh, work really well together. Second, boron solid lubricants. So there are kind of a family of solid lubricants. You're probably familiar with the use of uh, graphite, uh, molybdenum disulfide, uh, PTFE. Um, boron nitride falls into this family and it's uh, notable for its extreme uh, high temperature capabilities. So it can really be used and it really stays stable up to about 1200 degrees Celsius. Now boron nitride is a little bit like carbon in that it can make take many different crystalline forms. Notably, you need to check whether it's cubic or hexagonal because cubic boron nitride is the analog to diamond, right? So you can take carbon and, you know, pure carbon can be a diamond. Boron nitride can be cubic boron nitride. And this is an extremely hard, um, extremely abrasive uh, compound. So you don't want this one. It has many other uses. What you want is you want hexagonal boron nitride, which is the analog to graphite, right, in the carbon world. So it forms these, these uh, two-dimensional sheets um, and the lubricity between each of these is very high. So it acts as a great solid lubricant. Then we have boron corrosion inhibitors. Um, corrosion inhibitors uh, in, the, in the boron sense are typically used in metalworking fluids. So um, a lot of the boron salts are uh, water soluble and a lot of metalworking fluids are you know, water-based, so that makes it kind of ideal. And these also act as antimicrobials. So microbial growth is something that can often occur in metalworking fluids uh, because of the high water content. And boron corrosion inhibitors uh, kind of raise the pH level to the point where bacterial growth can't occur. Finally, we've got boron as an anti-wear additive. The most common of these is when you act uh, react a boric acid with a uh, dispersant and it gives you these boron anti-wear additives. What seems to happen is that um, at the at the interface, so um, in the load zone, these boron anti-wear additives seem to liberate um, insoluble boric acid, which is um, comes in crystalline form and can act to as kind of like an EP or a sacrificial anti-wear additive very similar to ZDDP. So boron anti-wear additives are quite popular in specifically in engine oils. So you'll often see boron 
in those formulations. Right, so that's the additives. Now let's talk about the contaminants. So boron is used in a number of manufacturing catalysts. So boron trifluoride, for example, is used in the manufacture of some detergents, dispersants, and in the um, process of making polyalpha olefin base oils. So if, and this is a very unlikely, but if any of the catalyst were to get into the finished product, you could see some small levels of boron as a result. Number two, and this is far and away the most common, is coolant. Now coolant is obviously a mix of antifreeze and water, right? Um, and the antifreeze, uh, those formulations typically contain boron, sodium, potassium, glycol, and, and obviously you've got the water. So generally, if you have coolant contamination, uh, it will be boron plus some or all of those other elements. So you'll see potassium, sodium increase at the same time. You should also see some water and glycol. That's an indicator that you might have a coolant leak somewhere. All right, boric acid can also be a contaminant. So if you remember, we talked about the ester synthesis. Acid plus alcohol makes ester plus water. Well, this reaction can actually go in reverse and it's called a hydrolysis reaction. So water plus ester can give you alcohol plus acid. And that's how we can get borated esters forming boric acid. In some cases, you may not want that. So there are, for example, um, some issues in wind turbine gearboxes where older style um, gear oils, which kind of had their genesis in engine oils, can form uh, boric acid, which precipitates out, clogs filters and all that kind of stuff. So boric acid, um, although sometimes used as an additive, can also sometimes harm us as a contaminant. Finally, cleaning agents. Um, so this is probably only going to be a problem if you, for some reason, have been using uh, recycled drums or IBCs. Um, industrial cleaners will often use um, boron-based cleaning, cleaning chemicals. And so if there is any residual that's left in the container before it's filled with lubricant, um, that could be another way that boron gets into your system. All right. I hope I have not bored you with this um, uh, topic on boron. Hopefully you find it useful. Um, as usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, as usual, this has been Lubrication Explained.